ஹலோ ஆல் வெல்கம் பேக் டு மை யூடியூப் சேனல் ஆல் அபவுட் வேலஸ்ஐ ஹோப் யூர் ஆல் டூயிங் குட் யா ஸோ லெட் அஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் டுடே செஷன் லெட் மீ ஷேர் மை ஸ்க்ரீன் யா ஸோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு கண்டினியூ வித் த டாபிக் கன்ஸ்ட்ரெயின்ஸ் இன் சிஸ்டம் வெட்லாக் வி ஹவ் ஆல்ரெடி ஸ்டார்டட் வித் த டாபிக் கால் கன்ஸ்ட்ரெயின்ஸ் இன் சிஸ்டம் வெட்லாக் அண்ட் வி ஆல்சோ சீன் வாட் இஸ் ரேண்டமைசேஷன் இன் சிஸ்டம் வெட்லாக் எவ்ரி திங் வி ஹவ் சீன் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ வி ஹவ் கம்ப்ளீட்டட் த டாபிக்ஸ் call set membership everything we have completed now let us uh, in today's session let us see distributed constraints in system wedlock let us see what is meant by distributed constraints in system wedlock and let us see what is this now so a distributed constraints are used to specify the probability distribution for random variables okay so in the case of distributed uh, constraints we are going to uh, give the probability of occurrence of a particular value in a constraint so basically let us see an example let's say uh, if we have a, a variable called priority okay we have here a variable called priority which is of int type and which is declared as rand so we have also de- uh, already discussed that any variable to get randomized it should be declared as rand keyword so any variable to get randomized it should be declared with the rand keyword okay until and unless it is declared as ra- with the rand keyword it will not be uh randomized right now in the case of distributed con- constraints we are giving the probability of zero the occurrence of zero to be of 7 okay so zero should be occurred for at least seven times and one should be occurred for three times so with the help of uh, distributed constraints we are giving the weight or the probability of uh, occurring of a particular uh, uh value okay so here the zero has a weight of 70% and uh, whereas here one has a weight of 30% so with the help of distributed constraints we are giving the weight for each and every uh, digits we want okay so that is what it is written here so in the distributed constraints are used to specify the probability distribution for random variables so this is achieved by using the colon operator we are going to use this colon operator for achieving the uh, this distributed constraints and which assigns uh, weights to the specific values or ranges okay so this is the key uh, this is the keyword which we are using okay colon equal to followed by the weight okay how many times or what should be the probability of particular variable okay so this is how we are going to give the weights of a particular value okay so here the zero should be uh, occurred for at least seven times and one should be occurred for at least three times okay now and also wait a minute one minute yeah sorry for that here we are mentioning uh, a particular value and also we can give the distributed constraint for a range of values also we can provide the distributed constraint for a range of values for example here in this example what we can write uh, we can use uh, 1 to 5 we can provide here one uh, let's say 1 to 5 distributed content a constraint operator we will use and you can give here 30 okay so like this also you can mention here uh, each digit will have a weight of 30 here each digit will have a uh, range of uh, 30 okay now so like this you can give a constraint okay here each digit will have a weight of 30 here one will have a weight of 30 that is one will be repeated for 30 times one will be repeated for 30 times and two will be repeated for 30 times and three will be repeated for 30 times so on like this each and every digit will have a uh, same weight okay so like this you can give the one minute so like this you can give a uh, distributed constraint for a particular range or for a particular value 
so this is distributed constraints and another type of distributed contain uh, constraint so this is this is also known as weighted constraints this is also known as weighted constraint i will write it here so there are two types of constraints actually one is weighted constraint or distributed constraints okay weighted constraint or the distributed constraint one we have seen now okay now another type of constraint we have um, let me show you that so this is distributed constraint or weighted constraint and one more type of constraint which is denoted by colon slash operator so colon equal to operator this is distributed constraint and we have one more type of constraint which is denoted by colon slash operator so in this type of uh, if we use this type of operator it will assign weight to each it, it will assign weight to the item if a range assigns uh, weight to a range it will uh, give the weight divided by 2 so basically it is uh, the weight is distributed or divided for example if we have a range like this uh, let's say 1 to 5 equal to 30 so th there are total 5 values okay 30 divided by 5 which will be equal to 6 so the weight of each constraint will each value will be equal to 6 the weight of each value in this particular range will be equal to 6 basically if we use this colon slash operator if we use this colon slash operator what will happen the weight will be equally divided okay divided between the values so there are total 5 values 30 divided by 5 will be equal to 6 so the weight of each uh, value each one more type of constraint which is known as conditional constraint and this conditional constraints are useful for uh, useful for defining constraints that are valid only under certain condition so these are similar to if else construct so we have if else conditions right so this is similar to this if else conditions okay so these are known as conditional constraints you can see example here so we have two variables one is of uh, in data type and another is of bit data type and these two are declared with the keyword rank one is called size and another is called is underscore high priority okay so we are using a conditional constraint and here you can see we are using constraint size underscore constraint the name is size underscore constraint and here in this constraint we are using if and else if this particular condition is satisfied then the size will be equal to 1500 else the size will be greater than or equal to 64 and size will be less than or equal to 500 so like this inside a constraint we can use if else loop okay so inside a constraint we can use if else loop so this type of constraint is known as uh, this type of con uh, constraint is known as conditional constraint so like this we can also uh, give the conditions according to our requirement okay now now we have one more type of constraints which are known as inline constraints so basically inline constraints to the randomized method okay so normally what we were doing previously first we are calling the randomized method okay so after declaring the constraints we will call the randomized method here in this uh, previous example also we are writing the constraints and we are uh, calling the randomized method but in the case of inline mentioned with the randomized keyword itself the constraint is mentioned within the randomized function itself so this type of constraints are known as inline constraints let us see an example for this inline constraint So let's say if we have uh, variables declared with the keyword ran bit a b c okay we have this variables a b c declared and uh, we can use a if loop or we can write it directly uh, let us say these are declared inside a class let us say these are declared inside a class called test okay class test ran bit a okay ran bit abc and ending the class and inside a module when we are uh, when we are calling this randomized method with the class handle 
let's say class handle is test underscore h dot randomize test underscore h dot randomize we can provide the constraint with this randomize only okay test underscore h dot randomize with x greater than 0 and uh, like this we can mention okay let me call this so like this we can mention our constraint with the help of when we are randomizing the particular variable test underscore h dot randomize with with the help of with keyword we can mention what type of constraint we are going to give so like this we can mention a constraint when we are calling the randomize so this type of constraints are known as inline constraints so this type of constraints are known as inline constraints so what we have seen till now we have started with the conditional uh, distributed constraints where or also weighted constraints and we have seen two type of distributed constraints which are present and we have also seen what is meant by conditional constraints and we have also seen inline constraints now there are one more type of constraints which are known as static constraints static constraints so what is meant by the static constraints let's say if we have a class called test and in this test let us take a rand bit a, a variable of bit type which is declared as with the keyword rand and let us in this class okay and within a module example okay uh, let us uh, create two objects for this let's say test t1 underscore h is equal to new and test t2 underscore h is equal to new so like this we have created our two objects and uh, the this variable is declared with a keyword static okay static rand bit a so this rand variable is declared with a keyword static static rand bit a okay now let's see so we are calling uh, the randomized method uh, the randomized method with the uh, first object t1 underscore h dot randomized okay so the randomization will be happen and uh, the we will get the values for the we will get the values for the uh, variable a now if we call t2 underscore h dot uh, let's say we will uh, off the randomization t2 underscore h dot rand underscore mode of 0 t2 underscore h of rand underscore mode of 0 and if we try to call the randomization method again t1 underscore h dot randomize then this will not happen okay since the constraint uh, since the variable is declared with the keyword rand since the variable is declared with the keyword uh, static so this variable will be shared across the two objects so any changes which is made any changes which is made by the second handle or the first handle will be reflected in the other handle so any changes which are made to any object uh, to the variable any changes which are made by any object handle will be reflected in the another object handle this is same like the static variables which we have already dis discussed in our previous sessions and we have also discussed about static methods static variables right so this is same as that which we have discussed in our prior sessions okay so this is about static constraints in our system develop so this is about the constraints in system wedlock and in our next session we will see some examples with the help of coding and we will try to understand them in a better manner okay so yeah so that's all for this session thank you